The information in this video may seem overly basic to some of you, but I'll ask that you go ahead and sit through it anyway. I'm going to talk a little about your grip and your stance, and maybe teach you a little about sights in this video. You could come away a better shot. These shots were made with a model 69 and 22 long. We'll come back to this target in a bit. The first thing I want you to do is spread your fingers out about as wide as a gun stock. Now press them into your shoulder. Raise your elbow up and down. Feel the changes in the muscle groups underneath there? There's a lot more meat to absorb the recoil with your elbow down. The demonstration I'm about to do is with a Model 94 with a straight grip. I chose this gun because I don't shoot it often, so I'm more likely to make some common mistakes. You want your shoulder to nest right into the curve of the stock. The top of the stock should be right about even with the top of your shoulder. If you've got it up too high or too low, the corner of the stock is going to dig into your shoulder and you're going to feel a lot more of the recoil than you need to. This is something that can cause you to flinch when you pull the trigger and throw your shot off. It can also cause yourself some serious bodily harm. If you're not comfortable firing a shouldered weapon with this grip, the problem isn't the grip. It's either your stock or your sights. Now break out your favorite gun. It doesn't matter if it's iron sights or scoped. I want you to pick out a target, close your eyes, aim at the target, and then open your eyes. First, my elbow's a little higher than it should be. That's the nature of a straight grip and there's not much I can do about it short of changing the stock. Next, my line of sight is too far to the right. Last, I'm too low. The fire sights on this gun are mismatched and I had to crank the back sight up to match the front. I'll eventually spring for a lower front sight, but the easiest solution for this would be to install an add-on cheek pad. It would move my head up and to the left. A cheek pad of the right thickness, mounted at the right height, is one of the best mods you can add to your rifle, and it costs about the same as a box of shells. Once your rifle is properly fitted, all you need to do is put the front sight on the target. The rear sight's going to follow automatically. I know that demonstration may seem trivial, but the place I shouldered that rifle to is instinctive. It's where I'm most comfortable and where my point of hold is going to be its steadiest. If you're all twisted around and, and scrunched up and you're bracing for a recoil, you're never going to be able to hold your crosshairs on target without some kind of a rest. I'm not saying it's inherently wrong to have a tall set of open sights on a rifle, only that it doesn't work for me with that stock. There's no one size fits all in shooting. Most rifle stocks are cut for somebody six foot tall and I'm five foot five. It's a lot easier to modify a stock or change a set of scope mounts than it is to grow seven inches. It's okay to modify your rifle, but do mods that make the gun fit your grip, not just because they look cool. Cool doesn't put holes in the black. Cool doesn't put meat in the freezer. The same aspects about your gun's fit apply to scoped weapons as well, but scopes present a whole new set of problems. Scope mounts come in a variety of different heights and they're not hard to change, so that won't be an issue. There are also offset mounts available if the eye relief of your scope is a problem. Eye relief is the distance between your eye and the end of your scope. If you're shooting rim fires, you can get a scope with a short eye relief. But if you're shooting high-powered rifles, you want lots of room for recoil. Close your eyes and shoulder your scoped rifle. When you open them, what do you see? The image should be in focus edge to edge. If the outside edges of the view are soft, your eye relief is wrong. If just one edge or one corner is fuzzy, your eyes not lined up with the scope properly. Your sight picture should be in perfect focus. The crosshairs and the edges of your view should be sharp. The issue here is something called parallax. To see this for yourself, sandbag or clamp your gun down and move your head slightly side to side. Even though your sight picture looks good, you'll see the crosshairs move back and forth. If you want to start shooting those really tight groups, you're going to need to make sure your eyes in the same place every time. So now you've installed the cheek pad and you've moved your scope. The next thing you'll need is a step ladder, a piece of wood, and a couple of clamps. You're going to sight in your scope from the standing position. I know your pals are going to torture you mercilessly about hauling all that crap out to the range, but you'll have the last laugh, I promise. See, if you're shooting from a bench or a bipod, you got time to think about pulling your point a hold off a shade. The point of impact changes with your stance. If you don't believe me, you can try it for yourself. When you need to make a quick shot and it's got to count, Chances are real good you're going to be making that quick shot from the standing position, so you want your crosshairs right on the money. You can always compensate when you shift to the bench or the bipod. 
Remember all that math you swore you were never ever going to use? <coughs> Wrong answer. We're going to take a quick look at how accuracy is measured. The system is called minutes of angle. You remember how a circle is broken up into 360 degrees? Each one of those degrees is broken up into 60 smaller units called minutes. It seems like an incredibly small fraction, but when you get out to 100 yards, that minute is a little over an inch wide. On most sites, one click of the adjuster is equal to one quarter MOA. So one click works out to be about a quarter inch at 100 yards. Okay, back to this target. The grid in the background is made up of quarter inch squares. If I'm sighted in on the bullseye and the bullet impacts here, I need to adjust the sight to the right three clicks and down five clicks. Here's the target we were looking at at the beginning of the video. Not exactly an impressive group, but then I don't make myself too crazy on the first target since it usually takes five to get a sight tweaked. Find the center of the group and then mark all the hits. Since I'm shooting at around 50 yards, each click is only going to equal one eighth of an inch. I'm up four and a half and one and a half to the left. So I'm going to adjust my sight down nine clicks and right three clicks. I like to tack a fresh target right over the old one. This way I can easily compare the new group with the old. Except for the third shot, this was a pretty tight group. I'm going to ignore number three and go back one click left and move my target out to 75 yards. This is still the lime in micrometer sight from a sandbag. Micrometer or peep sights adjust just like scopes, but there's no magnification. I'm really having a hard time seeing the bullseye at this range. Adding the fill and the yellow didn't help a bit. I think I'm going to discount that first shot. Okay, one more target. Back one and right one on the scope. This is getting to be a little too much like watching golf, so I'm going to cut to the chase. It's not the tightest group of the day, but it is centered. And 75 yards is probably beyond the maximum effective range of a 22 target load anyway. Here's one last thing you might want to try. If you've got a sling on your rifle, try tucking your left arm through the right hand side of the sling. Let it wrap around your forearm. I get the heel of my hand right up against the sling stud. You may have to adjust your sling to get the right fit. You do want it tight. It really helps some folks steady a long or a very heavy firearm. So there's some basics for you. There's no substitute for time spent on the range. But if you're going to be out there, spend the time improving your skills. If you're just running boxes of ammo through guns that are on bench rests and bipods, sandbags, that crap, the only thing you're punching holes in is the ozone.